This is our 1935 Rolls Royce Sedanka DeVille. I always told people that I would never own a pre-war car because you really can't drive them on the highways and, and I really never got excited about pre-war cars. Well, about a year and a half ago, I always look at the internet looking for cars or looking for you know different kinds of cars that that I may never buy, but it's interesting to me. I was going through the internet, and there was a dealer on there that dealt in nothing but classic cars. And I saw this car, and I couldn't believe how inexpensive it was. And I'm thinking, there's something wrong. Why is this car so inexpensive? And it looked pretty nice on the internet. So I, I called up the dealer, and I got one of his salespeople, and it only had a couple of pictures. I said, can you send me more pictures of this car and give me a little history behind it? So over the next couple of days, I was back and forth with this, uh, this uh, salesperson, and the car really started to interest, interest me. First off, it's a one-off car, which means it's the only one made. And that sounds like, when I tell people that, that sounds like it should be, make it worth a whole lot of money. But when you come to Rolls Royces and Bentleys, there's a lot of one-off cars because the way Rolls-Royce and Bentley worked in, in the early days when this car was made, Rolls-Royce was not really a car manufacturer or Bentley. They were a chassis manufacturer. And then who really manufactured, who sold the cars for them were all the, the um, coach builders. At that time, there were about 150 coach builders in, in the world. So they relied on coach builders to sell their cars for them, and they sold the chassis, and then the coach builder made the coach, and it became, there were certain restrictions that Rolls-Royce and Bentley had to make, to let you call it a Rolls-Royce or a Bentley, you had to follow certain criteria. But they weren't really car, car manufacturers, they were, they were chassis manufacturers. So consequently, um, somebody might come into uh, Park Ward, who this was, was the, uh, the uh, coach builder for this particular car, and they would tell them what they wanted. And they would design a car around what the individual wanted. And of course, then it becomes a one-off car. In, this, in the case of this one, a lady by the name of uh, Mrs. Sachs Romer, R-H-O-M-E-R, -E I'm not sure I'm saying it right, commissioned this car to be built. And it was commissioned in 19, probably 34, and built in 35. And anybody that no reads novels, probably uh, the, the name Sax Romer, probably you've heard of him before. And he was a famous novelist. Uh, her husband was a famous novelist in, in England. She was also a novelist, maybe not quite so famous. She wrote about 25 novels, and he did over 50. And he's most famous for the Fu Manchu, the 13 novels of Fu Manchu. He invented Fu Manchu. So why she, she commissioned this car, uh, and not her and her husband, but, and, and, and the really neat thing about this car is that it's 100% original. It's never been restored. And when I told you it was inexpensive, when I got the, I bought the car, so I, I bought it from photographs, but when I received the car, it was so dirty, you can, it, did not, it did not look even near what it looks like today. And it smelled so bad that it took us probably six weeks to get rid of the smell. And, but we did, and we cleaned it up, and it looks really nice. It's, it's never been restored, which makes, in today's world, that makes it probably more valuable than if it was restored. In fact, this car, uh, a couple of months ago, no, a couple of months ago, six weeks ago, uh, the head of the uh, Phoenix con uh, concourse in January happened to walk through my, my uh, garage here and he saw this car, and I, and I was explaining to him that it was 100% original. And he says, would you bring this to our con concourse next year, in January? I said, why? He said, well, we have um, 
a lot of cars that have never been restored, and, and there are none of them that are nearly as nice as this one. And this would make a great addition to our concourse. And I never realized it was that great, but it does look pretty nice. I mean, when you really see it in person. And one of the neat things that she did is in the back seat here, she uh, has two makeup kits that she commissioned to be built to be put in the back seats. And of course, these cars are made for chauffeur driven. You could not drive, I mean, they did, uh, an individual would not drive this car themselves. A Sedanka DeVille is, is a chauffeur driven car. It's not a limousine because there's only two seats in the back. A limousine would have many more seats. So it's kind of more of a personal car for an individual. And I kind of fell in love with, with free war cars now. In fact, today and right now, we have a um, 1935 SS1 Tour that we're restoring. It's another pre-war car. So I expect over the next couple of years, we'll see more pre-war cars in my collection. 